Hi, I'm Dyer Bennett, and today, as part of our casting webinar, I'm going to talk a little bit more about casting, and then we're going to walk you through the casting process, and also show you the results from that casting process. First, let's talk a little bit about casting and footprint. We've gone over a lot of detail, and as we had said before, footprints and tire marks are some of the most overlooked evidence at the scene. We walk through it, we don't pay attention to what's under our feet, but yet this evidence is almost as telling as fingerprints when it comes to matching pattern to pattern with a possible suspect. Here we have an example in a sandy soil of a footprint, a replication of something that you might find at the crime scene. The most important thing for us sometimes is just finding them. If you look for footprints, not always are they, are they so easy to see with the naked eye. We can use some things to help enhance it. One of the key tools that you can use at any scene when it comes to looking for footprints and contrast is just a simple white light. Now, most police departments, every police person I've ever met carries a white light with them. And we can use this in an oblique fashion to really show where a footprint might exist because the reflection across the pattern will cause contrast and allow us to see it. This can be very critical when we're looking for very light footprints, especially in dust or light dirt, or a very shallow footprint, where it may be very hard for the naked eye to pick up on the pattern, but very easy to see once we use oblique lighting across the pattern. When we go to cast a footprint, there are many choices that we have. We can start with something like silicone. Silicone has its advantages of being soft and pliable and easy to work with. Unfortunately, it also picks up every grain of dirt and every spectacle of thing that we are trying to cast into and very hard to clean up and a lot of times does not give us the detail that we would like to have. Our next step would be plaster, which is a white type material, uh, very much like this. Uh, this would be used in a casting. Its main disadvantage is it's very fragile. If you've ever handled a plaster casting or a plaster of Paris, uh, it is very fragile, very easy to break. So when we try to take this out of the cast, it'll break into pieces. Our next step up, it would be dental stone. Uh, this is the product that we see here. It is harder, has a low compression factor, and allows us to get the maximum detail from a print. Beyond uh, this, we would move into specialty products. This is one that we have that Searchy offers and, and others may. This is a product which includes a dye. And what that dye does is it allows us to see when it's mixed up properly. So this will go from white to a blue color. In addition, we have another one that also is green. And what distinguishes it from the blue version is that the green one is also a higher level of dental stone. Now we have the maximum compression strength its ability to hold up to handling, and also the minimum shrinkage so that we're going to keep the detail as much as we can. We have a few other tools. You know, we want to have a water bottle available, so if we're not in a bag like this and we need to mix some plaster, then we're going to need water so that we can make the mix. We may want to use a release agent to keep product or anything that's soft and uh, can contaminate the cast from sticking to it. If we're casting into snow, we can do snow wax, which will allow the snow to have contrast for photography and also be used to hold up and give a place for the casting material to be poured into. And if you have real loose and sandy soil, something like this, uh, we will use dust and dirt hardener to make sure that none of that shifts when we start to pour the plaster or the dental stone into the cast. Finally, we could use a stick. It will help to smooth the material. On top, we will use possibly a set of casting frames for a very shallow print. And as always, if we're going to take photography, we are always going to have a scale. Now we have reviewed all of the materials that we will need to do a casting. We also talked about finding the footprint. And now we're going to prepare this footprint for casting. As always, we mentioned the scale. First thing we want to do with this footprint before we do anything to it 
is we're going to place a scale around this print and then we are going to take photographs of it. We typically will take this at multiple angles with a, a light and take those photographs to get contrast to make sure that we have gotten the entire footprint and all of the detail, detail that we can. So that will be our first line of defense. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to cast. And as I talked about all the different materials, today we're going to use dental stone, which is the most common material to use because it is strong, it holds up, and it gives great detail. So as we go to prepare this, um, because of the shallowness of this, we want to make sure that we use some kind of casting frame. The, we want the plaster to stay in the footprint. We don't want it to run out on the surface. So we will use this casting frame. We're going to use a disposable casting frame today. And that will allow us to build some thickness. And therefore, we'll have strength to our cast rather than a very thin cast if we didn't use it. Uh, this is pretty easy. You just bend these. And then you try to judge about how big your print is. You want to make sure that you're extending further than the print. So we will put these together. And we'll bend this this. Create a little portable casting frame. I'm going to put this in the print and we're going to set that down into the soil. Now we're ready to get ready for casting. The last thing that we want to do is now we have some loose soil and we want to make sure that when we're pouring the casting material that we're not disturbing that loose soil and actually changing any of the characteristics that might be present in this casting. One way to do so is to use some dust and dirt harder. Uh, this is a simple aerosol. There is a pump spray versions of it, but you just want to lightly spray over top of the soil. We don't want to spray hard directly into the soil. Just want to put a nice small top coat on it to prepare that surface for casting. So now we have the footprint prepared for casting. Uh, we put our casting frame, we've got everything tied up with the loose soil. And so I'm going to use a shaking cast. Self-contained, has a bladder with water in it, it has dental stone already in it. Generally the rule is we're going to use about 10 ounces of water per two pounds of dental stone material. Uh, the shaking cast contain a little bit more water than that because we want a little bit thinner consistency. But in general that would be the rule to follow. So what I'm going to do with this shaking cast is I'm going to lay down on a hard surface, I'm going to break this bladder, and then we're going to get to start mixing. Right, we're going to shake our material down, we're going to mix the water together in this material, okay? And then one way that we can help to mix it is we can rotate this so that it doesn't get stuck in the corners. And in general, we're going to mix this for about a minute to make sure that it is consistent. And you can start to feel this material start to thicken it. It is going to get a little bit warmer as we do this. We're going to make sure that all that powder is mixed together. mix it. About a minute. If you don't, you could have some thick material. You could have powder that comes out of the bag and is clumpy. This should be about the consistency of pancake batter when we bring it together. Okay. Again, rotate. Make sure we don't get any of this in the corners. We're getting a good mixture. A little song while you're doing it. So our material feels pretty consistent, pretty much like pancake batter. I'm now ready to cast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the corner off of this bag and then we're going to start pouring. You want to cut the bag at an angle. And then what we're going to do, we're going to start outside 
of the impression, and we're going to work inside to the compression. Always pouring into dental stone, not into the impression itself. Now that I'm done with the cast, what I may want to do is to smooth this out a little bit. Bringing my material across the surface. Make it more even. Then we're going to leave this alone. We're going to let this set up for at least an hour minimum. If conditions are different, if it's more humid, if it's slightly wet outside, uh, it will take longer for this to dry. So we always recommend that the an hour is the minimum. Real recommendation is I'd like to leave this cast for at least two or three hours, maybe half a day. And then I'm not going to touch this cast as far as when I remove it and start looking at it, cleaning it or anything for the first 24 hours. So for now, we're going to leave this alone and then we're going to come back, we're going to pull the cast and we're going to see what we got. Okay, now that we have waited the proper amount of time, usually we're going to wait at least an hour. Depending on conditions, we may have to wait a little bit longer, especially if it is really humid. Uh, or if we've had some rain or something, they may take longer for this to set up. So let's say that we have let this set long enough. We're going to remove our frame from around the cast. We're going to gently just pick this up out of the impression. And then as you can see, we have a lot of material that's still stuck to the surface. And we're going to leave this on the surface. We're not going to touch this at all. I'm either going to package this in a craft bag and take it back, or I'm going to wrap this in paper, uh, and then I'm going to take this back to a laboratory setting or back to the department, and then I'm going to take this and clean this with a soft bristle brush in a sink and make sure that I remove anything. Now, I'm not going to attempt to clean this until about 24 hours later, so I'm going to let this set up completely, and then I'll be able to clean it and then do, some examina do my examination. Okay, now that we've removed the impression from the scene, we took it back to the laboratory or to the department, and we cleaned it. So this is the results that we got immediately. Uh, we were able to remove all the soil from the top of this. We used a soft bristle brush to make sure to clear anything that was on the surface of this away. And the dental stone holds up its integrity, so therefore you have all of the impression details uh, provided that we saw in the sand prior to casting. So this is an, a good example of something that you would get in sand. You may get more detail depending on what the soil level is. Maybe that it's more clay or it holds up better or the impression was deeper. Or sometimes you may have less detail. You may have a partial print or you may have conditions that aren't conducive to a good cast. So this is a, a good example of what a casting would look like.